I was uh, speaking at a YPO event, Young Presidents Organization. They have they have chapters all throughout India. If you're a CEO of a company or president of a company below the age 40, you you can qualify to apply for being a part of the YPO. Mm-hmm. And you probably know them, right? Right. Yes, right? some of them. Yeah. And um, so this was a a dinner of nine CEOs. It was a weekend retreat that I was leading with them. And um, I always bring my wife, Linda, to those. Mm -hmm. And they wonder, why do you bring your wife? Well, first of all, I like being with her. And they're a little bit surprised at that. (laughs) 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 And then I know that they will want her advice sooner or later. And sure enough, this particular night, they said to me, do you think Linda would join us for dinner if we asked her nicely? Mm-hmm. And I said, yes. And so she came. And so imagine this. It's on a, a back uh, a piazza overlooking the golf course, the 18th hole. And there's mm-hmm. nine CEOs with gray hair and blue suit jackets. And I mean, pretty intimidating for Linda. But um, she came along and we sat down in this beautiful glass uh, conference room overlooking the golf course as the sun was setting. Mm-hmm. And um, she picked up her fork to dig into her meal. and um, the CEO at the end of the table said, Linda, I have a question for you. I have spent the last 33 years busting my butt to make, to, so that my family and my wife could live like princesses. Hmm. And you spend a lot of time with these people and particularly with their spouses. And I wonder, do you ever sense any kind of gratitude? Now, if you think about that, Deepak, that's a, that is a deeply felt question. It's, hmm. it's a hard question to hear. It's coming from a pretty painful place. But Linda was so gracious. She looked at him in the eyes and she smiled and she said, yeah, sometimes I sense gratitude, but very often I sense that they, they, tr- they accepted the lifestyle you provided in exchange for the intimacy and the cherishing that they really, really wanted. Hmm. So one of the things we give up is, is, is what's priceless. So one of the exercises to do is to make two lists on one sheet of paper. On the right side, write down everything you have that's valuable. It's buildings, it's properties, it's stocks, it's car, maybe it's a house, maybe who knows what you have. On the left side, write down everything you have that's priceless. And then ask yourself, what am I doing to protect the priceless things? Now, when I did that first, based my mentor, Bob Buford, encouraged me to do it, asked me to do it. I found that many of the things that were in the priceless category were completely unprotected. Hmm. I wasn't paying attention to my health because I was so focused on making money. I wasn't really deeply investing in my marriage. I I could do a better job understanding my children's strengths and learning style and love language. And um, so, you know, my reputation was largely unprotected, but it's priceless to me. And I went back and I I worked on protecting the things that are priceless. So if you're in your first half and you're on an all out quest for wealth, my encouragement to you is work hard, do what you love and wealth will come along. But don't ever trade something that's priceless for something that's merely value. 